by the very name fortune is a function of number of things but definitely it's ultimately people everything is done by people but uh, quite often we underestimate the role of luck and god i say everyone talks about books have come out treaties have been written about what google did right but as if when google did it google knew it but after that you theorize then you try to copy google it doesn't happen because google has become the best practice google followed next practice so the next organization have to go for next practice whether in people whether in business process innovation everything so fortune 500 companies are a culmination of a constellation of capabilities which may be and this is a classic case of how the mighty fall jim collins talked about it one is the hubris of success when you build up a huge hubris of success and then success becomes your biggest enemy will you forget to learn it has happened to microsoft of course they are sitting on a pile of cash or if you look at even uh, as new com- as little as as recent as apple suddenly apple's apple is sitting on 157 billion dollar cash pile but more money is getting spent now on uh legal tangles with samsung which means you are be- becoming a protectionist you are no longer investing on innovation but doing more on fighting legal cases that's the first sign now what do you do it because this is the hubris of success that you forget the moment you become leader that you are once upon a time a challenger so you create that so fortune 500 vanishing is nothing to characterize india maybe more or less whatever but i personally feel it happens worldwide otherwise enron wouldn't have been gone out of uh, business or for that matter no, no um, kodak wouldn't have gone out at the same time when the day kodak filed for insolvency another company with 52 employees got sold at 1 billion i'm talking about instagram two and a half year old company so it's very difficult to uh, pinpoint the reason for it but if you look at it every decade every moment if you look at even the whole um smart uh, the phone business mobile phone business five decades th- three decades five leaders why it happens is because of the fact that we become so ge- enamored with success we stop then you become a defensive player you are no longer offensive when you start the journey nokia once did that so all its companies became big player and now suddenly nokia has become a, a butt of joke or for that matter suddenly blackberry become for a change will be used as a fruit so so if you look at it that uh, i really cannot pinpoint she might be able to do it but in my own experience i have noticed it is about constantly reinventing your capabilities through people through various symbols some of the principles that she have mentioned they are primordially true they will always be true only thing the nuances will get changed depend on who is your new stakeholder who is your new employee what is the new expectation why today companies are facing a huge problem is because of the fact that first time thanks to technology ubiquitous technology pace of change and of course a globalized workplace first time business cycles and consumer cultural cycles are clashing previously business cycles used to come at periodic intervals it used to they used to call it long periods of stability interrupted by small period of instability now there are long periods of instability punctuated by small periods of stability this is a punctuated equilibrium in a punctuated equilibrium state the most important part is how do we continuously rejig the business formula companies don't go out of business business models go out Which, which is media industry is facing the same thing business models are getting so there is no company who will not be affected by google's disintermediation and no one knows how it is going to take shape now that is the consumer culture i am talking about so the moment business culture and consumer culture changes in sync with the pace of change of technology and subsequent or consequent change of consumer culture you cannot predict future so the if the iceberg is melting we are waiting for the melting to happen but melting happen beyond your gaze that is the ability to decode what you can't see and that most of the companies suffer from that corporate astigmatism if i may say and that's where you lose out okay let's look at the 
Fortune 500 list or the S&P 500 list. Every decade, a third of that list drops off, one third. Either they die or they're bought over or something else happens to them, okay, every year. So which means 170 companies are going out of business or out of that list every year. So it's tough to stay in that list. It's very, very tough to stay in that list, okay? So why, your specific question of why haven't Indian companies been there, it's, you have to start with the consumer and the customer and your appreciation of what value you drive for them. And that depends on the following factors. The size of the domestic market. India's had a huge domestic market. America has a huge domestic market. Japan did not have a huge domestic market, 140 odd million people. None of the Euro European companies have a big domestic market. Okay, that's the first determinant. China had a huge domestic market as well. The second one is regulation in protecting the domestic market. India has protected the domestic market for a number of years till 1991. China has protected the domestic market for a number of years. America hasn't protected it for a number of years. Okay, so if you're open to challenge from outside, you become world-class very quickly. If you compete only with the neighborhood boy, you'll be better than the neighborhood boy. Okay, that's this. And the third is the, the company's dream in terms of its own horizon. What does it want to be? I think the current level of uh, you know, Indian entrepreneurs and uh, current generation, the Tatas, the Mahindras, the Birlas, they're all globally focused. They're all global corporations. Maybe it wasn't there two decades ago, but today you can clearly see that all of them are globally focused. For many, many companies in the IT sector today, non-India revenues are significantly bigger than India revenues. Okay, so it's happening. Okay, so I think it will happen more as India gets integrated into the global uh, economic system. Hi, I'm Ramandi from Voxiva. I would like to have your thought on uh, when we're talking about uh, Workplace 2020, the and the global culture, the cultural impact, India growing, you know, more global, more challenges in internally, out, you know. But then the imp the challenge which we see in the cultural part from internal, uh, being an Indian, global perspective of it, and the challenges which could which we could see, do we see a lesser challenge going further uh, from the cross cultural perspective? Or do we see more challenges? Uh, what are your thoughts and you know, your take on that? Something to? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you. As you integrate with the global world, th there are a few things which I'd like you to think about and take back to your company as watchouts. Okay. Uh, sometimes I feel, because all my life I've worked only for multinational organizations. I worked you know, in matrix organizations for the last 12 years, I've dealt with a number of global colleagues, etc. Sometimes I believe the average Indian is too intelligent for his own good. You know, I truly believe that. Why? You look at it. Anybody sends India uh, a plan, we want to add value. We want to do it our way. We never take the plan as it is to say, let me implement this. That's one. Second, you look at any meeting, any phone call, any tele any telepresence. Whatever is said, we want to add value and say something more. So sometimes I think we are too smart for our own good. We have to suspend some of those things and say, I'm willing to take something from you, in which case they will be willing to accept more from you. If it's a question of constantly telling people how smart you are, then people will collectively say, look, this smart generation is not for us. Okay, so watch for that. Those are common dealers that we have. And we will be a very important dimension of the global workforce. But what we need to do is, change behaviorally, specifically in our listening skills, specifically in accepting that somebody's point could be valid and could be implemented in our country. Okay, if we are more welcoming of those thoughts, I believe we'll be truly part of the global uh, work.